Hello. I was recently playing a game on my Amiga and wanted to play two player and I realised I hadn't got a second joystick anymore. So I had a look on eBay, looking forward to picking up a deal on a second hand joystick, but I was disappointed by the prices. I just can't believe how much retro stuff has really increased in price over the last few years. On my Amiga, I used this Zipstick to play, but this one's had a fair few repairs over the years due to my brothers playing Street Fighter 2 on it back in the day. So I wondered to myself, could I make my own? Well in this video, I'll attempt to find out. The first thing we need to do is understand the wiring. There are several platforms that include a 9 pin D connector, and they share common pinouts. As I'm making this for the Amiga, that's the wiring I'll be using, but if you wanted to attempt this for another system, then that wouldn't be difficult to modify. I also want to include rapid fire for this joystick, as that's what the original Zipstick and other joysticks of the era had. The rapid fire is just repeating pulses very quickly, measuring the zip stick approximately 15 times a second. From my electronics background, I know the easiest way to do this is use the common 555 timer chip. And using this circuit diagram with these component values, I should get a frequency of about 15 Hertz. But I don't want a load of random components floating around, so it'd be better to build a PCB for these to be soldered onto. There are several places to order PCBs from and for such little cost. After waiting about a week, these turned up from JLB PCB. I've left a link in the description so you can order your own. I'll now assemble one of these so you can see it working. I'm going to play this a little bit faster as no one wants to watch this, but first I set about placing all the components where they would be on the circuit diagram. Then I slowly insert each one into the board and solder them in turn. I'm using a chip holder here just to make things a little bit easier, but the 555 is pretty robust so if you haven't got one it doesn't matter. The last part I solder in is an electrolytic capacitor. It's very important that you get this component installed the correct way around. Ok, so that's finished and as you can see I've powered it up and the LED is flashing rapidly. I've connected up my multimeter as well so you can see the final frequency it generates. The LED here doesn't look like it's flashing at a consistent speed, but that's just the way the camera's picking this up. So, onto the circuit for the joystick. When any of the buttons are pressed or the joystick is moved, the pins for any of those are connected to ground. With rapid fire we also want to be able to switch it on and off. So I added a switch here. This will switch between ground and the output from the rapid fire PCB. Also, on the Amiga, whilst not often used, you can have more than one button. I've connected up the second button to a second switch, so it can be either set as second button or the first one. Again, with support for rapid fire. So that's the circuit figured out, but what about an enclosure? Well I like the look of the zip stick, so I've designed something similar. It's not identical, but it's close. Then we need the actual stick itself. I have two designs here, and we'll need to pick the best one. Both designs have the top missing. This is to make 3D printing easier. The first design uses a 3D printed plastic shaft. I have concerns this won't be strong enough and may easily break. That's why I've designed a second one that's hollow, so we can run a metal rod through the middle. So now I have the joystick, and the housing, now I need to actually make it functional. I find it easier to model the parts that I'm going to use, and I'll be using these standard micro switches. These switches are fairly robust and easy to get, making them an ideal candidate. And from repairing my zip stick in the past, I know that's what it uses. So, modelling them in 3D, I've designed the following parts, that when assembled will provide a suitable spring-loaded shaft with the right amount of movement. The spring isn't going to be 3D printed, I'll order a suitable spring to use. The joystick needs a little bit of movement at the top in order to pivot, and again to make this easier to print I've separated this part. When assembled and pressed the entire joystick looks like this. To hold the top and the bottom on I've used a C-clip, I'm hoping to be able to attach this to a groove in the rod at each end. Now onto the directional switches, these need to be placed around the four directions that you could move. I have designed a part that will fit here that the switches can attach to, and should get pressed correctly as the joystick moves. Lastly, the fire buttons. I want these to feel spring loaded, but I want the spring to come from the actual micro switches themselves. This means the position of these needs to be fairly accurate. As I've made the top of the buttons nicely rounded, I want them to fit through the case and not drop out, I've made them in two parts so they can be glued together each side. I've designed the bottom half with a large surface so it can easily make contact with the micro switch. In the bottom half of the joystick, I've made placeholders for the micro switches to fit into, which will align with the buttons on the top. I've also made a place for holding the two switches and a hole for the wire to come out of. 
Lastly, there's a space for where the rapid fire PCB will be placed. Assuming everything goes to plan, this is what it will look like fully assembled, obviously with the wiring as well. So I'm hoping everything's going to be okay, and I'm now off to start printing. I'll be printing this using PLA. So everything's finished printing, we've got the base bit here, and the top off. It took a while to remove all the support material, but once it's done it's not too bad. Then we've got the piece that we're going to attach the four micro switches to, for the directionals. That's part of the shaft for the joystick. That's a little collar that fits on the top. Then we've got the little piece that has a special separator. The actual fire buttons. And lastly the cord grip, which will go just here. So eventually we're going to want to screw all this together. I've decided to use metal thread inserts. These are easily placed into the board with a soldering iron. They can be a little bit tricky to put in. You need to make sure they're perfectly aligned and you also need to make sure that no plastic ends up inside the thread. It may be worth drilling the hole a little bit wider first depending on the accuracy of your printer. The technique I use is to put one on the tip of the iron, let it heat up a little and carefully and slowly push it into the plastic. When it's in position, I use some clippers to hold the piece in place while I remove the iron. An alternative way to do this is to screw a screw into it all the way and use that to hold it in place while you apply the iron to the top of the insert, gently pushing down until it's in place. I strongly recommend practicing on a piece of scrap first as if you make a mistake, you could fix it with glue. Worst case though, you may have to print the entire piece again. After finishing this, make sure you give your soldering iron a good clean. I've also used the inserts for where the four buttons will go. After all the inserts are in place, I strongly recommend testing them and making sure that you can screw the screw in all the way without any problems. Otherwise later you may encounter difficulties. The next thing I want to do is assemble the joystick shaft. I'm going to leave the plastic one here as I have the metal rods. The metal rod is made of aluminium or aluminium for my American listeners. I did want it to be stainless steel, but there's no way I'll be able to modify the stainless steel rods with the tools I have. Based on my design, I need to saw some grooves in it for the C-clips to sit in using a junior hacksaw. These need to be in a precise location, and so I've made these guides to help. The reason there's two is because the width of the metal blade is slightly thinner than the C-clips, and we need a slightly wider hole. You only need to saw in a few millimetres. And I'm not going to make you watch me saw these, so here's one I made earlier. So we'll assemble the shaft of the joystick and we'll start by attaching one of the C-clips to the top half. I find using pliers to clip these into place is very useful. Next, we add the little collar to the bottom of the joystick and then push that through the lid of the joystick. Next, we add our special little spacer in. You have to push this all the way down. It's a bit of a tight fit, but that's fine once it's in place. The next thing we need is a spring. The spring should fit nicely over this piece here and that goes on next followed by this piece. You'll note that it has one way round that's bigger than the other. The small end needs to be at the top, and there goes our C-clip. And again, we'll use the pliers to clip this in place. Once you're happy with that, you'll see that it works nicely. The next thing we'll do is glue the top on. This is very easy, I'm just going to use super glue. It sticks really nicely to plastic. I'm also going to apply a little bit of glue just where the C-clip is, just in case, although I don't expect it to move. 
I'm just gonna hold it there for a few minutes while the glue sets. It doesn't take long. Now onto the fire buttons. These are really easy to do. The first thing is to apply a little bit of glue into the recess on the bottom of the button. Then we hold it into place while we push the plunger part in, and then we squeeze it together until the glue sets. Then simply repeat for the other button. The next thing to look at is the cable. I could build up my own cable, see the Maplin's connector there, that's practically an antique on its own. But instead, I'm going to use an existing cable. This is an RS232 serial cable, and I'm just going to cut the end off that we don't need. But before we go any further, we need to know which wire is which. So we'll start by stripping the ends of the wire. Then I'll strip the plastic from the ends of each of the individual wires. And then lastly, tin each end just to make them easier to solder later on. So I've made myself a little contraption to work out exactly which pin is which. I've got one of these connectors here, and I'm going to plug the cable in and test each wire. When any of these pins gets connected, one of the LEDs will come on, and I've got them in order from 1 to 9. So we'll start with the black wire. Okay, the bottom light, that's pin 9. And we'll work our way through the colour sequences. Brown, pin 1. Red, pin 2. Orange, pin 3. Yellow, pin 4. Green, pin 5. Blue, pin 6. Violet, pin 7. And finally, white, pin 8. So let's attach our cable grip. There's many ways you could do this. For example, you could use the method I use in my drawbridge videos, which is to use a bit of heat glue. But I don't think I need to do that for this particular case. So once the wires are threaded through, I'm simply going to hold it in place using a cable tie. The next part, I'm going to assemble the micro switches. Place each one of them in place, and I will put the screw in for each one, just loosely at the start. They do help guide them into place. Then once all four are in, I'll tighten them all up. You may need to make sure you remove the plastic from the other sides of these holes, otherwise you may find screwing them in difficult. And there you go, that's how it fits when it's finished. So now we'll start some of the wiring. First, I'm going to clip the switches in place. They're a bit of a tight fit, but they're not going to move. Then I'm going to start by assembling the ground wire. I'll speed this up as you don't need to watch it. One of these ground wires also needs to go over to one of the switches. And from that switch, onto the ground connection on the rapid fire circuit board. Next, we'll connect the violet wire, the 5 volt wire, to the 5 volt connection on our little rapid fire PCB. And finally, we'll connect the output of the rapid fire PCB back to the switch. Next, we'll connect up the fire buttons. Again, I've pre-made some cables to help here. And I'm going to place the switches in upside down because it makes it easier to solder. The fire buttons get connected to the centre pin on the switch at the bottom. Next, I'm going to use a little bit of double-sided sticky foam just to hold the PCB in place. You could also use hot melt glue. Now I'm going to connect the wiring for the four directional micro switches. Just note from this angle that left and right are in the right way round, but up and down are reversed. I'm going to start by applying a little bit of solder to each of the connections to make it easier. These may take a little bit longer depending on how good your soldering iron is, because the pins may take a little bit longer to warm up. Now we're going to connect the fire buttons up, and we're going to start with the left hand one, button 1. This gets connected to the left hand side of the switch, as well as directly to button 1 pin. Then we wire up the second button. That's using the black wire. So we connect that to the other side of the switch. 
And then finally we take the connection from the centre pin on the switch back over to the button. So everything's wired but we need to test it. So I've built myself a little joystick tester. I'm going to test it on my zip stick first to check that it works properly. So we'll plug it in. And up. Left, down, right, yep that works. And the fire buttons, do they work? Yep, the fire buttons work. Okay. Onto my joystick. Hmm, that doesn't seem right. There's four lights on there that shouldn't be on at the start. Ah, oh, that's not quite right. It looks like we've got two of the directional switches wrong, and we've also got the fire buttons wrong. We should have been using the other pins. Did anyone else spot that earlier? So we'll go ahead and fix those now. Now that we're happy that it's wired up correctly, we'll assemble the case together. This is where this piece is going to fit, but it will be a little bit awkward to put in. The easiest way is to rest this piece in place, and then carefully move all the wires out of the way, making sure none of them cross the middle, and then all of them are inside the case. Once happy, I clip the cord grip into place as well. Now with a little bit of waggling, the top should just slide straight on. And then we can put our screws in and screw it together. Five probably is a little bit overkill, but hey. And then there's a little bit of a finishing touch. I'm putting some little rubber dots on the bottom so it sits nicely on the table. Then I'll once again bring in my joystick tester, just to make sure that we haven't knocked any of the wires off while we were putting it together. It appears to be working. Let's try the fire buttons. Yep, yeah, okay, let's separate them. Yep, yeah, now we've got two fire buttons. Great, how about the rapid fire? Well, that seems to be working great. Just so you get a feel for how authentic this sounds, I've re-recorded this again with the audio on, and you can really hear those micro switches clicking. It sounds great. Okay, let's do some actual testing. Now we're sure that it probably won't blow up the Amiga. If you do decide to build this, it's totally at your own risk. What I've done is I've connected my joystick up to my Amiga 500 Plus, and I'm taking the output through the RGB to HDMI adapter. I'm going to load up the wonderful Amiga Test Kit by Keir Fraser, and we'll use that to do an actual joystick test. Seems to be working perfectly. I think I'll go and play the Adams Family. Well now I have two joysticks for my Amiga. That's fantastic. If you want to build your own, then have a look in the description because the links to all the parts and everything you need are there. Don't forget that you can also make this for different systems by changing the wiring. If you enjoyed this video, and give it a thumbs up. Next time, I'm going to look at how to connect this joystick via USB, so if you don't want to miss that video, then I really suggest you subscribe to my channel. If you want to support me further, then why not hop over to Patreon and support me on there. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you next time.